G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Thanks for watching Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we're here in the beautiful hinterland of Brisbane to do a massive job on a massive tank. So we came and had a look at this tank last week and we found a tank which is absolutely huge with a huge algae problem. So today we're gonna to take the first steps to fix this algae problem and we'll show you exactly how we do this. But this is gonna be another session where we're gonna to have to swim in the tank. So let's get in there and have a look. Check it out. How huge is this tank? So this tank is 12 feet long by 4 feet wide by 3 feet high. So that is almost 4,000 litres, which is 1,000 gallons. This tank is massive and it's a room divider tank. So as you walk in through the front door of the house, you walk past the side, the other side of the tank and you come around into this uh, living room area and you can see the other side as well as the end of the tank. So it's really important that this tank looks good. It's a central feature of the house. And as you can see, there is a massive amount of algae on the glass. And we also have cyano on the rocks. So we have a few things that we have to tackle. And it's gonna be difficult because of the size of the tank. So let's start by having a look at what we're going to do with the algae on the glass. So typically with the tank of this size, the main way that we remove algae off the glass is with magnet cleaners. And we have two of the best magnet cleaners on the market for this thickness glass right here with the Magnafloat and the Flipper Max. Now we've already given it a bit of a go with both of these magnet cleaners and they are removing some of the, some of the algae but these stubborn thick dark green sections aren't coming off with either. So we're going to need something which is a little bit uh, a little bit better, a sharper blade, and we have here one of the Gallery Aquatica blade holders. And so this is gonna be an easier way to get this type of algae off. But the problem is gonna be how are we going to reach the algae right at the bottom. Okay, so I've pretty much done everything that I possibly can do with our magnet cleaner on this side of the tank. And you can see we still have quite a large patch of this difficult, stubborn, dark green algae. So this is what I'll definitely have to use the blade with. Now we might be lucky and I might be able to reach from above and get this. So I'll try that first. I'll grab my ladder and my blade. So I've got my ladder and I've got my blade holder. Let's have a look above the tank and see what access we have to work with to get in to reach this algae. So we have a light rack that holds a number of radions and the radions are currently ramping up. So they're almost, well they're probably about 50% of full power and they've just got to a point where we've been able to turn on the other lights, in the room lights, so we can see what we're doing in the tank. So let's reach in and see how far we can reach for the algae. All right, so that's about as comfortable, as far as I can get comfortably. So I will do as much of the algae like this as possible. It's quite an easy way to get the algae off the glass because with a brand new blade, it just gets every bit of algae that it goes past. And it might take two or three blades to do this whole tank, but we'll see how much we can get done. I think 
That's it for the magnet cleaner on this side. So we removed the bulk of the algae using our magnet cleaner and you can see that the water is quite cloudy with particles of, al of algae. So we're gonna have a look at the skimmers to see how they're going because the algae floating in the water column hopefully will be being pulled out by the skimmers. So let's check it out. So I figured I should have a quick look at the skimmers now that I've taken so much algae off the glass with the fear that maybe the algae in the water column may cause the skimmers to over skim. And I really wish I'd looked at them first because they are horrendously full of waste. So we've taken the cup off from the first one from that side and we've come around this side for the second one and it is so bad. That has got to be one of the smelliest, dirtiest skimmers I've ever cleaned out. So they're doing their job, they're pulling out the waste. The problem is that they're creating so much waste because of the size of the tank that they're clearly not being emptied enough. So we need to increase the frequency that these skimmers are cleaned out. Oh, so bad. We have a little bit of work to do in the sump underneath. We're going to clean the salt creep off. You can see it's actually crazy thick with salt creep from the skimmers uh, spitting water over the edge. But we're also going to put some keto, some keto morpha in the refugium so that we hopefully will have a nutrient export system that's working more efficiently than what's happening at the moment. So we'll put that in now. Bit of a mess. I like to tease it out so that it occupies as much of the space as possible, but I think that's going to make a big difference. The light for the refugium is not on at the moment. This tank is running an anti sink photo period, which means that the refugium light comes on at night time when the display tank light is off. So this should do the job quite nicely. We'll get to this salt creep now. So on this side of the tank, you can see that there's a lot of this difficult dark green algae growing. And my guess is that given the position of the tank relative to the uh, windows and doors, that the ambient light is just hitting this section more than the other parts of the tank. So I'm gonna spend a bit of time and focus on this area, but luckily it's close to the top of the tank, so using our blade holder is going to be easy. So I'm actually going to change blades. It's just missing a couple of bits here and there. So I've got lots of blades, they're very cheap. So I'll put a new blade on our blade holder. So good having a new blade. So we've done everything that, that we can do with this green algae on the glass without getting into the tank. Let's have a look at the other problem algae that we have in this tank. And the big one is cyanobacteria, this or also known as red slime. And you can see cyanobacteria generally will come off the rock very easily by wafting your hand over it. Now as I do that, there's a lot of debris and detritus that's coming up off the rock. And so I think what this tank needs is a bit of a, a scrub across the rock and that will do two things it will remove the detritus that's built up as well as some of this green hair algae and also the cyano so I'm going to go over as much of the surface of the rock as possible and you can see that coralline algae which is actually growing quite well but we're really exposing that by taking off this green hair algae and cyano. So we've done everything that we can do from outside of the tank. So it's time to get inside the tank to clean right to the bottom. So I'm gonna turn off the return pumps and 
it's very easy. Two buttons there. Now, an interesting thing about this tank, because it's such a big tank with a relatively small sum, there's actually a one-way valve on each of the return lines that stops water siphoning back down into the sump. So we can turn off the return pumps and not have to worry about the sump flooding. However, when I get in the tank, the displacement of my body potentially will cause a flood. So we need to remove uh, volume of water to ensure that when I get in the tank, we don't flood anything. So for this purpose, I'm going to get our 300 litre black tub and we're going to drain water from the display tank into that tub that will then pump back in after I get out of the tank. So what I'm doing is draining water from the tank down into our tub and I'm going to use the same hose line with a power head, a little Opto water transfer pump to pump the water back into the tank when I get out. So I'll leave this sit here for a little while and let it fill up. So it's time to get in the tank. Before I do this, I need to make sure that I've got everything ready. So I've got my blade holder. I've got an extra blade up here. Put that somewhere safe. And I'm also well aware of the fact that there's a diadema urchin in this tank. It's in the far corner. I have to be very careful that I don't accidentally swim into it. So, we get in this tank. So it's a huge tank, but it was actually quite difficult to get into it. So I'm just changing the blade over and these blades are cheap. So as soon as it is less than perfect, I swap it out because there's nothing better than a brand new blade when you're trying to get off algae when you're swimming in a fish tank. All right, someone got that snorkel? <laughs> So I've got rid of as much of the algae as possible off the glass. So now I'm just gonna take the opportunity of being in the tank to stir up the sand a little bit. So I'm gonna run my fingers through the sand, stir up the detritus, remove the cyanobacteria, and hopefully not get stung by the fox face or the lionfish or the diadema urchin. So anyway, I'll do a lap and then I'll come back and jump out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get this water pumping back into the tank, and then I'll get dry. There we go. We want those, uh, the return pumps running so the skimmers can start to pull all of this detritus out as quickly as possible. We're probably gonna to have to change or empty the skimmers in the next few hours because there's so much organics in the water column that they're gonna go crazy. That'll take a few minutes. 
So we've got the bulk of the algae off the glass from cleaning from the inside and we're just going over some of the spots that I've missed. It is difficult to see the algae from the inside so it was inevitable that there would be some little patches that got missed. So I'm just going over them with the magna cleaner. You can see that the water is quite cloudy. Uh, I've purposefully stirred up the coral sand. There was some piles of detritus that were unable to be reached from outside the tank. So the skimmers will pull all of this waste out and we'll clean the skimmers in the next few hours. But this tank, really, we've done the first step at uh, fixing this tank and getting it back to being a tank which is going to move forward and look good and uh, allow for corals and fish to thrive. So we'll bring you more updates on this tank over the next few months. Hopefully this will be the only time we need to swim in the tank. We should be able to do everything with a magnet cleaner from now on. But we'll uh, show you our progress as we go. So thanks for watching this episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. I'm Cam the Fish Guy and happy reefing. So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy and keep on reefing.